Biker Billy cooks with fire. All right, my knife is sharp and I'm ready to chop up hot peppers. And you tuned in the dial, so you must be ready to do what? That's right, to cook with fire. Tonight, I got an interesting recipe for you. We're going to dispel another one of them cultural myths. But first, I want to tell all of you wonderful viewers out there who've been sending in your outrageous recipes that I am cooking them, I am checking them, and I'm going to be announcing a bunch of winners real soon. What you got to do when you write in, even though the voiceover don't say it, is put your phone number on, unless you're smart enough to put on the size of your shirt. It makes it go quicker. Now, when we come back, you're going to be mortified because we're going to cook something that is, it could be quiche. Yes, they say real men don't eat quiche. Then again, real bikers just eat anything they beep, please. So, sit back, relax, pick up a bowl of my quick salsa recipe and some chips and get ready to cook with fire. All right. All right, look at that. My sharp knife turned into a butter knife. First thing we're going to do is take ourselves two tablespoons of margarine and pop them in our nice hot pan. Mm -mm -mm. Listen to that sizzle. Now, we're going to take two nice, wonderful red serranos. Actually, they're not serranos. I fooled you. <laughs> Playing with your mind. They're red jalapenos. We cut off their tops because we don't eat them. And we're going to take, slit these down the middle, and now we're going to just move that marge off. We don't want marge to get sunburned, do we now? And we're going to take and we're going to slice these little babies up. Nice little pieces. The seeds, the placenta, the whole shebang. Now, this is a recipe that I'm calling could be quiche. You can refer to it loosely or firmly as spinach, pepper cheese pie, yeah. But it could be a quiche. It's one of them kind of French kind of things that we sort of uh, have imported. Have you noticed that so many of the kinds of food we eat here in America seem to have started off somewhere else? But America's the bread basket of not only the world but the universe because there ain't no other place we know of where you can grow good food like you grow it here. Now, we got our nice hot margarine. We got our wonderful red jalapeno peppers all chopped up. We're gonna put them together, and what do we get? We get sizzle, mm mm, -mm. Now, I got an onion. This onion here, when I start slicing into this, and, and this onion, one of my cameramen, he, he cries when I slice onions. He just can't take it now. Chuck over here, the only thing I've heard Chuck crying about lately is that wonderful Triumph 500 Daytona that's sitting in his garage that he's trying to get back on the road again. So, if you got a bike, don't let it sit in your garage. Get out there, get into the action, enjoy the good fun. I know Chuck here would be totally thrilled if this Sunday he could take his bike out and go riding like I'm going to go riding. Right, Chuck? All right. See, Chuck's a real biker. He knows that deep down inside, although that bike is tied up for a little while, that he's going to be riding again real soon. And if you want to start riding... All you got to do is pick up the phone. I'm going to tell you an 800 number. 800-446-9227. Call the Motorcycle Safety Foundation and learn how to ride now. I got my onions and my hot peppers, and I got them sautéing in this pan, and we're going to let them get all simmered up. We're going to cook them until the onions are kind of golden brown and transparent. Now... One of the things that we're going to need for our recipe, because any kind of pie has got to go in a dish, so we got to have a pie mix. I'm using a store brand, commercial, you don't have to go out and get some kind of fancy dancy, any kind of instant pie mix. You could say, I'm going to make my pie from scratch, but frankly, it's not worth the trouble. I've tried it, it comes out great. 
but the mixes come out real wonderful. And this mix is so easy to do, it's just incredible. You literally dump the mix in the bowl. So we gotta stir our onions, you don't wanna burn them. And you're gonna take four, now you go by the instructions on the one you're using. This one says four, three to four tablespoons, so I put nice three tablespoons, four tablespoons. I put the larger amount in there because I don't mind if the dough is a little moister and you literally mix this up with a fork and it's incredible. It's a pie crust, it comes out, oh boy. I forgot to put my apron on, oh look at that. I almost ruined a good Viking t-shirt, knocking everything over because I ain't got my apron on. Now, get my apron on here and we'll keep mixing up this dough. The other day, or I should say the other night, I was out on what we call a midnight fun run. Out on a, a poker run that was run overnight. It was a lot of fun. Get out there on the roads when there was nobody around. There must have been about 150 bikes out riding through the back roads of New Jersey. Riding around, and we did some very interesting things to get points. Now, if you don't know what a poker run is, that's a scheduled event where you go out on your bike and you don't race you go from point to point sometimes they put line marks on the road and you follow a preset course sometimes you get written instructions and there's always some type of prize and the way you win is by who draws the best poker hand or who scores the most points so we were out in the middle of the night we were doing everything from rolling dice to standing in a parking lot somewhere outside of Philadelphia trying to throw wooden rings on pegs at about 4 o'clock in the morning. You had to see this line of bleary-eyed bikers hanging out there tossing these wood rings, trying to catch the prize. Now, the prize on this show, all you got to do is have a recipe and check out the address at the end. Now, all we got to do is take our nice pie crust dough we're going to break this down into two balls because what we're going to do is make two pies. We're going to let this sit aside for a second. And I'm going to clean my fingers. And when we come back, we're going to start making the filling for our could-be quiche. All right. All right. Now, check out these onions and hot peppers. They're beginning to turn transparent and they're nice and browned on the edges. At this point, what we're going to want to do is add in four, one, two, three, four teaspoons of chopped garlic. Mm, mm, mm. Boy, the aroma of this is outrageous. Get that all stirred up and turn the heat off so that we don't burn up the garlic. And we're going to let this cool. This is going to go into our wonderful, could be quiche filling. Now, we've got our great dough here that while I was telling you all sorts of tales, I needed some with the fork and needed it with my hand. We're going to let this sit aside for a little while and then we're going to make pie crust out of it. Now, one of the things we're going to use is we got this enormous chunk, listen to that, enormous chunk of Monterey Jack cheese. So what we're going to want to have is three cups of shredded Monterey Jack cheese. So I'm just gonna slice this down and I'm gonna take and feed this through my food processor with the shredding blade. And I promised my sound man, Mike Freeze, that I'd be quiet like a good biker when I make noise. All right. Sounds like I'm making it work real hard, don't it? All right. Now. I broke my promise, didn't I? I said some things while I was processing. Now, what we're gonna do is take our cheese and I bend over here and get a bowl. We're going to take our cheese out of this bowl, out of the food processor bowl, and we're going to put it into a nice bowl from which we'll be able to measure it from 
wonderful shredded Monterey Jack cheese. Just beautiful, just delicious. Probably have more than three cups in there, but it don't matter because if we got extra, we'll just use it, you know? I mean, really, we can be cool about this because it's not like it's something special. It's like it could be quiche. Now, we're gonna set that aside. I got a real large bowl here, and what we're gonna start off with is some spinach. I've taken a 10 ounce package of frozen spinach and I've thawed it out. Now I wanna show you something. I have thawed this and I've drained it and I've squeezed it. And you gotta be real careful because that don't look wet now, do it, right? That don't look wet, now watch this. Look at that water run out of that. That spinach is a tricky vegetable. See, you thought that was dry and look at that extra water. So drain it real well. You don't want sloppy wet spinach. Now, we'll throw that in a bowl there. We're gonna fluff that up a little bit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our mixture, which has cooled some, and we're just gonna flip it right in there and be real careful that you scrape out all of the wonderful juices in this pan. That chopped up garlic is real fine and you don't want to leave it behind. Now, we're gonna mix this up and since that spinach is nice and cool and the onions are nice and warm, they'll moderate themselves to a nice temperature. Now, we're gonna have to do a little bit of egg work in here. You know, this is kind of a could be gourmet kind of dish. So we're gonna have to do some could be gourmet kind of preparation. I got me some eggs here. Let's get that little spinach out of that bowl. We're gonna use three eggs, all right? What we're gonna do is we're going to use the white of one egg in preparing our crust, and then we're gonna use what's left of that and two eggs in our filling. So what we'll do is we'll try this gourmet egg business. Now watch this. I can do this without taking my finger off. I'd use the back edge of the blade. Break that egg in half. Keep the yolk in one half. Pour it back in the other and look at that. A biker doing gourmet tricks. Now I'm going to throw the yolk aside into a nice bowl and I'm going to add two more eggs to it. All right. Notice I don't try to do this one-handed. I ain't got that kind of French egg hustling trick. Now, we're gonna set that aside. Our nice mixture has cooled down enough that we can begin to deal with it. And we're gonna take, and we're gonna put our cheese into this. Now, where's my measuring cup? Look at that. But before we put cheese into this, we're gonna take some half and half. You can use heavy cream or you can use milk. I like to go right down the middle of the road. It's my road after all, and I'm gonna put half and half in there. One cup of half and half. Now, we're gonna stir this up real good. Take a look at this. This is quite an interesting sight. Now, when this is all stirred up real well, we're gonna take and we're gonna measure our three cups of cheese. And don't be scared about pushing down on those measures. So that's one. That's two. You gotta be careful with shredded cheese. There's air space in there. And that's three. So we're gonna put that in there. We're gonna take a fork here, or actually I'm gonna take a fork, because what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit back, relax, Check out these messages, and when you come back, we're going to make pie crust, and we're going to bake ourselves a could-be quiche. All right. Now, while I was away, I stirred that up. I didn't tell you I was going to do it, but I did it, and I'm going to add one tablespoon of paprika. Nice, bright, beautiful paprika. It's not hot, but look at that color. This stuff is outrageous. One tablespoon. Then we're going to add one level teaspoon of black pepper and one level teaspoon of salt and we're gonna mix this up real good now while we stir this up the next thing you know we got to do is we're gonna have to make ourselves a nice pie crust now got that stirred up we're gonna sit that aside mm -mm -mm. boy that is delicious now we've got 
our pie crust dough. We've got a nice dry cutting board. We're gonna sprinkle some flour on that cutting board. This is why we wear a nice good apron to keep our bike and t-shirts clean. Take your roller and get some flour on that roller. What you're gonna do is you got this nice round ball and you're just gonna sorta roll it back and forth till it makes a little bitty log and we're gonna lay it down. We're gonna find the center of that log and we're gonna cut it in half and we're gonna form two balls. Two nice balls of pastry dough. We'll set one aside and take the other one. Again, make sure you get a ball, flatten it out so it's round. Then you're gonna roll this out, changing directions every so often while it's still thick. You're gonna flip it over and you're trying to keep a good amount of flour on this and you're rolling it out from the center. Now my cutting board's dancing all over the place. I guess I must have had them polish this table too hard between shows. Like the chrome on the bike, got to get a nice shine on the table. So we're going to roll this out. Now the goal here is to be as close to round as possible. We're going to roll this out. You got to know when you, ooh boy, I spilt my eggs. Got to know when you got the size right. What you got to do is take your pan out and you got to see that it's a little bigger. You want it about an inch, three quarters of an inch bigger than the pan you're going to use. The recipe we're preparing, the ingredients is, en is enough to make two pies. Now, sprinkle a little flour on top of this, and this is a big secret. You can't really pick this up. So you lay the rolling pin there. You roll this back. Don't even bother picking it up. Take that pie pan out and just unroll it onto the pie pan. And if you get it just right, which I didn't, you won't have to try to pick it up. Now what you want to do here is make sure you have no holes and that you have enough overlap. Oh, this is going to argue with me. See, it's not going to look simple. You want enough overlap so that you can go around the top and manipulate this crust so you get one of them nice, fancy edges. So all I'm doing is squeezing that excess dough with my fingertips. And if you get a place like this where you're short a little, take a little extra off of somewhere else and put it on top. Now, we'll just get that around. What we're going to do is take our pastry brush and we got our nice egg white here. And we're just going to brush egg white across this whole thing. Now, you're going to brush the whole crust with egg white. This is going to prevent the crust from getting soft and gooey from the ingredients. And because I knocked my bowl of eggs, see this is real life. Some other, some other cook could pretend he didn't knock the eggs over on the table and make a mess out of the place. But I'm a biker, I can live with the mess I make. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take three eggs. That's what the recipe calls for you. You could use the one white for the brushing. Take your three eggs. Ooh boy, gourmet trick. Open that egg. One-handed. Oh my God, you'd think I'd been to France. Look at that. Now, you whip those eggs in there. And you whip this up real, real good. Now, when you've got this thoroughly mixed up, and I mean thoroughly, you want to get these ingredients totally associated with each other. What you're going to do, you got two pie crust you're working with. You're going to want to split this in half between the two pie crust. You're going to want to have your oven hot to 325 degrees. You're going to bake this in that oven for 45 minutes to an hour until the center is nice and firm. Don't overfill it. You want to have that nice little rim of crust around it. It looks beautiful. It could be key. Now, into the magic oven. Oh, where'd the oven? Oh, oh, okay. Into the magic oven. When we come back, it'll be cooked up. We'll cook with fire and we'll check it out. All right. It's a mess. I mean, look at this place. It's a mess. This is what happens when the biker cooks sometimes. That's why I'm not in the kitchen. Some of you have asked, 
Hey, biker, why aren't you cooking in the kitchen? Well, I make such a mess, I gotta be in some kind of place that it's easy to hose it down. Now, take a look at this here. You see the egg on the table? We ain't fooling you. That's a genuine egg, and I ain't crying over it. Now, there'd be something to cry over is if you didn't get to try this recipe. It's outrageous. I put it in my magic TV oven, and it ain't been 45 minutes. Dang, if that oven ain't on the other side again. Now, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's absolutely fantastic. It is wonderful. It's spicy. Ain't no French guy gonna recognize this as quiche. It's got New York American Biker Fire. Now, check this out. It's wonderful. It's absolutely delicious. If you want to try this, all you got to do is check out this information. Remember, eat hot, ride safe, and next week we'll cook with fire. All right. This has been an All Right Production, copyright 1993 and 2010.